This is uh, Naveen Noel, uh, a senior solutions architect from ZSL. So today I will be discussing the migrating uh, the approach uh, to migrating applications to the cloud. So we have devised an eight-phase approach to migrating approach, which I would like to share with you all. The session will be um, introduction to the company, of course, uh, exploring a clear definition for cloud computing. Um, then discuss. We'll go ahead to discuss ZSL's eight-phase approach to enterprise application migration to the cloud. Then we we'll talk about some of the cloud services, what we offer, and a couple of case studies to share with you. So, my role in ZSL. I work out of Edison, New Jersey, and the practice here of enterprise computing competency. So, cloud computing competency in the application side. So, we do sales and products, um, bring in new clients. We talk a lot of customers. Talk a lot of New customers and existing customers. So the key focus areas would be value added R&D, product development, and product engineering. I've been on the cloud, working on cloud technology since the early 2007. Let's go with the company overview. So we are a global technology integrator, business solutions provider, headquartered uh, in New Jersey. We have a uh, state-of-the-art research and development center in the U.S., Canada, and India. We have Employees all over the globe, US, Canada, France, Germany, Malaysia, UK, Singapore. Yeah. So, and we are very dedicated to research uh, center focused only on research and development activities um, and emerging technologies. So, we are the pioneer in the industry in solutions development in, in the areas of insurance, finance, governance, and electronics, telecom, and so on. We've got some awards to our credit. Also, partnerships with WAS, SPs, and ISPs. So, so NICA, ISO, CMM certified solutions uh, provider. So, let's jump into cloud computing. Uh, I had to define this cloud computing. I didn't want to add this slide, but um, it is really required before we understand how applications are migrated. So, um, we have a number of definitions for the cloud computing, um, but the simplest and the most standardized one defined by the National of Standard Technology goes like, like the cloud model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources. That is network, servers, storage, applications and services that you can rapidly provision okay, and release with minimum management effort service provider interaction. So the one simple, in simple words, it's a flexible, flexible hosted resource pool of delivered on the internet. So all services are delivered, delivered on the internet and all hosted off the web. So the essential characteristics of cloud computing, some of them are like on-demand self-service. So the services are ready to use. You need very minimal interaction intervention from the service provider. So the user can come online and, and, and request of a specific service and it's made available instantaneously, almost instantaneously. You have a broader network access. Um, you can access wider networks, wider services because everything is virtualized. Resource pooling, the pools of resources on demand like compute, memory, storage, disk, all these resources, whatever you see on your, on your net infrastructure, network infrastructure locally, are all available on the cloud as virtual, uh, all are virtualized on the cloud. So they are on demand, uh, available on demand. So you can pool these resources and pull them and you know use them when you want. Rapid elasticity, 
you can scale up and down out and in with demand so you can scale up and uh, you know increase for example increase your memory to uh, or and then decrease your memory on a specific machine scale up and scale down or scale out um, like increasing the number of servers and cluster them together all done uh, on the cloud with the, within a matter of minutes so and you can also auto scale you can write some specific scripts or some cloud, cloud providers give you the features of auto scaling uh, these resources when on demand so you don't even have to worry about uh, uh, when, you, when you need extra resources you don't have to keep monitoring that the system will take care of automatically understanding your demands and they will auto scale it's a measured service metered usage and billing pay as you go only for whatever is used so the basically uh, you pay what you use so when you don't need something you shut it down you don't get billed for it so basically the apex uh, the uh, opex uh, the op operational expenses versus the uh, capital expenses so multi-tenant usually share the, pla the platforms with others not always you can basically share the platforms with others um, other users other companies and, and, and use these services so different types of cloud deployments uh, we all know these type of cloud deployments they're the public cloud private cloud hybrid and the community clouds um, the public cloud is external it's on the external premise it's multi-tenant self-provisioned public service over the internet offered by a vendor available to all basically the utility, com utility computing model so the public cloud is available to any and everyone uh, you would uh, not know where the public cloud is installed you would not know where your virtual machines are installed but it's available with a with a vendor the example of public cloud providers are like amazon uh, go grid rack space opsource azure google so these are all kind of public cloud providers so you have to trust the vendor for your application uh, to uh, if you trust the vendor everything is is basically good to go because you won't know where your data is stored but it's there somewhere out there a private cloud is basically installed inside your app inside your organization or inside your data center it's single tenant tightly controlled access so you own the hardware you own the hardware you own the cloud so you define what you want inside that specific area so you basically can see your infrastructure and also the cloud so um, some of the public cloud providers are actually providing data centers specific hardware data centers and offering a private cloud hosting inside that data center so uh, basically um, uh, they give you a data center and say we deploy our software on this data center the public cloud it, uh, on, the so on this data center and they make it privatized for that specific organization so in that case you can actually visit the data center you can see your hardware but the software which runs on that specific hardware that is a cloud software is from a public cloud provider so some of the uh, companies are doing this um, this way of pro providing a private cloud interface a hybrid cloud is a combination of the above uh, because some of the applications what you typically see in enterprise are public facing some are not public facing some are internal applications some are desktop applications um, uh, so some are very tightly integrated with the finance systems and other systems in the organization so there are different types of applications not all become typical candidates of cloud so the concept of hybrid hybrid cloud is using a combination of public and private so basically you have a private cloud uh, to host all your internal applications which you know, uh, are very which needs sort of security which are too tightly integrated and coupled with your other business, other um, applications running and you also have the public cloud where you can host your websites and you can off offload them to the public cloud and then you have a VPN kind of a connection uh, between your private and the public and then run your entire business so most companies are looking at hybrid as one of the options then you also have the community cloud um, the community cloud is a shared infrastructure by single organizations for mutual, mutual benefit so basically governments universities have a, a common infrastructure um, and share that infrastructure for a specific purpose so that's called the basically the community cloud again all these cloud are just types of clouds the underlying layer is a cloud software basically it's virtualization and then the cloud cloud software which uh, which uh, runs on them so some of the private cloud software um, which we can install which you can create a public you know private or a community cloud uh, uh, vmware cloud stack and eucalyptus ubuntu enterprise cloud so these are some of the cloud software which we can use to create a public or a private cloud 
So what is enterprise application migration? I know this is too long, but I just wanted to put it out there to yeah, for us to get some clarity. So the challenges when migrating applications to a cloud infrastructure are plenty. We all know and range from you know uh, service level agreements, security regulations, vendor lock-ins, lack of standards, governance. So so many types of challenges are there with the cloud. So every good thing comes with some kind of challenges. So there are challenges in, in the enterprise application migration as well. So building businesses are looking out for better ways to basically migrate their existing apps to a cloud infrastructure so that they can basically enjoy all the features of the cloud and use the flexibility of the cloud and um, run their business. They also get some freedom of choice uh, for different using different programming models, languages, operating system, database, a combination of all of them. Um, um, seeing all these benefits, many organizations are basically moving all their apps to the cloud today. Um, to enjoy these cloud specific benefits. The biggest benefit again is pay as you go. You don't have to pay uh, for when you don't use the service, specific service. So you just shut it down and you're not built. That, that really is a very beautiful, sweet feature to have. So um, and all this again is done with very minimal effort. You don't have to put in extraordinary effort to achieve all this. So this is one of the major um, um, benefits for the cloud. An application migration actually is the process of redeploying an application. Um, so re deploying, uh, I mean, an application is already installed in a data center or in your organization, and you take it and redeploy it uh, back onto the cloud. Typically, your newer platforms and infrastructure could be yes, uh, newer platforms and infrastructure. So, so you have an application. Say, example, you have an employee application running inside your organization, or a finance application, or for example, a website. You just take that application and you move it to the cloud. But before you move, you need to be very sure what, why you're moving it. So what benefits you actually are looking out from the cloud. Um, the process involves the staging of new environment. Um, um, so you need to put new environment and requires coordination of IT teams and the time for cutover. So there should be close, close coordination with the application um, um, IT team, with the application owner, the stakeholders of the application to see that everything is uh, gets migrated properly. So with this, uh, let's see the eight phased uh, enterprise application migration to the cloud. So there are eight phases basically. I brought them down and cut them down into eight phases. This is done purely on an experience with uh, over the last few years by moving some of the applications to the cloud for our customers. So we learned over a period of time and that's why we wanted to uh, share with you all these eight uh, phases. So very briefly, the first one is the discovery and assessment uh, where you discover there's a need and you assess cloud candidates basically. So all, all applications are fit for the cloud. So this is the stage where we assess that. The proof of concept, we do a proof of concept to see whether it really fits the bill, whether it really is uh, this cloud already supports what we need. Um, so all clouds have different features. So, so we need to find out the right cloud for it. Then we design. After we finalize, we design the uh, cloud application. Basically, design on a cloud. So that doesn't mean don't confuse this with software design. We we not we are not designing a software there. We're designing the cloud itself, architecting the cloud. So cloud services. So most probably most of the applications do not need to go through code changes when doing this design. So you're basically making a way, uh, designing on the cloud, using different cloud servers to see how you can scale up and, you know, use the, uh, the cloud the features of the cloud. Then we go for host and application migration. So after we design, we know what we're doing, we know how many instances we need, we know the cloud what we're going to use. Then we migrate the local infrastructure. We migrate it to the cloud, where we migrate the whole OS that is operating system along with the applications in it. Then we go for data migration. Uh, in fact, four, the phase four and phase five go together. The, the database, all the data, what is there in the local systems have to be migrated to the cloud. Then we go, go for testing. We test the whole system. We roll it out. We do some kind of an iterative process there to see everything is working in place. Then we leverage other cloud features. So basically, the cloud has got many other features. So we keep doing, uh, trying out different options to see which feature suits us the best, which feature optimized which feature we can actually leverage the best for our business need. Then the last stage we go on to is optimize. Then we start optimizing, reducing costs and you know so on. So everything goes for optimization. So the same way similarly the cloud also goes for an optimization. 
So let's see the, the phase one of this. So discovery assessment. So first we clearly understand, identify the business need for the cloud basically. So business needs are there always for everyone, but whether this business need actually uh, is in focus, is in, in alignment with the cloud. So we check this out first. Then we do a cloud assessment questionnaire. After we identify, yes, this specific application um, could be migrated to the cloud, application or applications. Um, then we send out a questionnaire. It's a simple questionnaire sent out to our customers, our prospects. We are going to fill in those that questionnaire to make sure that we understand what they, they need. So, so after the need is, uh, uh, is, is identified, then the details are basically written in the questionnaire. So we need to know what kind of systems they have, what operating systems that they have, what are the kind of applications they have, what kind of data they're looking at, what kind of compliance, what kind of governance they're looking for, security, SLA, all these things will come out in the questionnaire. Then if required, the questionnaire is not uh, um, really giving us complete details, we might visit the client. You might visit you and, and do an on-site uh, assessment there itself at the, at the, at the premise, on-premise, on-site basically. So then uh, we do an assessment, update the questionnaire and come to an understanding as to what the current, what the requirement is. Then we end, after doing that, we identify what is the right cloud platform to, to use. There are a lot of them available. Some are PAS providers, some are IAS providers. So what is it that we're looking out for? So um, choosing the right cloud provider is very, very critical. Each cloud has its own features. They're good for certain things. So we need to leverage that. So this is one key um, uh, area what we're going to focus on. And, and once we identify this cloud provider, we address security concerns, if any, because we, all most organizations have the data. Data is private to them. So they need to understand uh, and tell us what the security concerns are. So we, we, we see that that security concerns are addressed in the specific cloud, what we're using. So data is owned by the customer. So we decide geographic locations. So for example, some data cannot be sent out of the country. Since cloud is a public, we do not know where the, where the instance is created. Now, at least nowadays, the cloud providers are telling us which countries, which zones they are actually keeping that data. So we need to know. Suppose we have to send, uh, you want to use the cloud, in, uh, being in the US, you want to use the cloud in, in say, uh, Asia, APAC. We don't know the rules and regulations there. So we need to be very clear what kind of data goes out and comes in. So they are governed by the laws. Encryption is also very important. So then we identify cloud candidates in the organization. So there are cloud candidates, not all applications are, are uh, cloud candidates. We need to know which ones to map, uh, typically move, which ones not to move. So file servers and Active Directory, all these kind of things uh, are already not moved to the cloud. But websites are typical candidates for the cloud. So we need to understand, identify, segregate that. So then we go for classification of ITSS. So we understand which applications are with sensitive data, which are low, medium, high compliance requirements, which are external facing, which are com com customer facing, internal, partner facing, we have to seg segregate that. Because based on that, we're going to create security security groups and see how to leverage the cloud. Then application with low, medium, and high uh, coupling. So coupled together, tightly coupled together, we need to understand this. The, the more independent the application is, the more easily it can be migrated to the cloud. Application with different licensing models, that's one of the biggest challenges. So each application has its own licensing model. Many of them don't have the licensing in place too. So um, some products have um, software as a service based license, subscription based models. Some don't have that. Some ba are based on users. Some are not even geared to the cloud. So we need to really clearly understand whether that specific application you're moving has that specific licensing model. So we need to talk to the vendors for that. At the end of this stage, we actually give a ballpark estimate as to how much this whole engagement would cost the customer, how much time it is going to take. So we go out and submit a proposal, again, which is subject to change, and give an idea to the customer um, what his requirements is, what are his requirements, and how much will it cost him, how much time it's going to take. So this is what the discovery phase and assessment phase uh, describes. The phase two, here we go for a proof of concept. Um, Sometimes we may not need a proof of concept. Sometimes we, we, we will need it. Most of the cases we need a proof of concept. So to understand different features of the cloud being used. Like suitability. We educate the suitability. 
of the cloud provider, which cl cloud suits the you the best as I described in the assessment phase. So after we identify, okay, for example, just for argument's sake, say, let's be, let us fix it with Amazon. Now when we fix, say, and say Amazon is the best cloud to, to be used for this specific case, we are still, um, certain factors are unknown till we actually do a proof of concept. So that's suitability phase, stage. Then identify the applications for POC. So all applications uh, we will not include in this POC. We identify very few applications that could be probable for that, probable for POC. So we validate the latest and the greatest technology, ensure that all our assumptions regarding the design of equivalent cloud infrastructure are accurate. So um, uh, the technology, the assumptions, all these we put in together. We verify estimates and costs. So we make sure that the estimates and costs are within the budget of the customer. We perform benchmarks and see and set the right expectations. So um, what is the expectation from the customer? What, is it, what does he expect from this cloud, whole uh, exercise? So those expectations are basically met so that the customer is convinced and happy. Then we identify bottlenecks and overcome them. Everything has bottlenecks. So there are some caveats there. So we have to un understand, identify them and mitigate that risk there. So in this proof of concept, all these uh, issues will be, uh, the whole that, um, thing is done and proved to the customer that this is possible with the cloud. So um, we, uh, we, we actually basically uh, have a subset of the application which we do a proof of concept, we don't do the entire application. Sometimes the proof of concept, it becomes so complex that um, in the proof of concept itself, the whole migration is, is done because that's how um, some of the applications are built. So basically, for example, the proof of concept takes two thirds of the time and the actual application migration could take just one third of the time. So this is what happens sometimes. The design. So this is very, very important, critical in the design stage as every software, uh, after the proof of concept, we have a fairly good understanding of the design. Just that, like all applications uh, need uh, design need to be designed before they are de developed. Similarly, even cloud-based applications um, need to be designed. The cloud needs to be designed. It has to be architected. We need to know what cloud features we are using. So we need to be sure and understand the cloud-specific requirements and how we are designing it. What are the specific features we are using in the cloud which could help the customer? So we need to be very clear with the requirements and design. So for this. The architect or the designer has to have a very good understanding of the cloud vendor he's, he or she is choosing. Cloud services. We need to understand different cloud services and value additions as I mentioned, uh, mentioned about. Um, the cloud is evolving. This comes with certain limitations. We need to consider them also when designing. So all the services offered around the cloud, what the limitations of this specific cloud Certain things are not possible, certain things are possible. We need to clearly differentiate and make a list of that, make a checklist of it. The technology stack plays a very important role when designing the cloud. So each technology stack has specific requirements. They need specific resources. We need to ensure that everything is in place. Um, for example, a specific technology stack may not be available on a specific cloud. So there's no point in, in choosing the cloud when this technology stack is not supported. So make sure you go with technology stacks supported by the vendor. There are many other open source or uh, you know customer images are out available which are not supported by the vendor. Uh, we, we advise not to use them because uh, it is not supported by the vendor. If you run into any issues, you are responsible for it. So make sure that the customer and the vendor supports those specific uh, images. The workarounds, if you have uh, certain features that are not possible, Certain things are not possible in the cloud. We need to have a workaround for that and try to see, uh, do, uh, have some kind of custom script or code written up so that we can you know, leverage that portion of it or uh, we can go for a hybrid cloud model or combine two different clouds for those specific two, two, uh, two different specific features. So th this, this is very critical in the, in the terms of the design. We need to know what is not possible and how to uh, have a workaround for it. Design for failure, nothing will fail. This is something I read about. It's very common, yes. You design it as if it's going to fail and nothing will fail. So uh, basically take care of uh, backup and disaster recovery, those kind of features. So RAID kind of technologies, any anything, whatever, mirroring, there are so many ways how you can design for failure. So all this is possible. Most of them are actually possible on the cloud. 
So you design keeping in mind the application is going to fail any moment. Imagine the data center comes down, what is going to happen? So if you think in those lines, design for that, nothing will fail. This is something in Netflix, um, online streaming video service, that's the same thing, they do the same thing, they design for failure and nothing basically fails, that's their basic objective. So even when, when, when Amazon actually went down some uh, days ago, uh, um, due to unavoidable circumstances, Netflix was still running because they actually designed for failure. Security, data is private to us, we need to secure it, we need to be sure what it needs to be secured. Based on the level of security, uh, cloud also provides you, the cloud vendor provides you some security services, leverage it, use them and see how best you can secure your data. Control costs. As you design the system, you need to control costs. A very good design will reduce the cost a lot for you. Yes, so basically cost controlling is very important uh, in the cloud. So you can design a, a system which costs you thousands of dollars. You can design the same system in a different way, which costs you probably hundreds of dollars. So it depends all on the system because the cloud is so flexible, there are multiple ways of doing the same thing. So you need to be sure how you're going to do, how you're designing. A simple example. Uh, if you take Amazon for example, mm, they've got something called as reserved instances, spot instances and non-demand instances. So the reserved and the, and the spot instances have a very good value, it depends on your need. But many uh, customers do not know about that. Many service providers also do not know how to use them. So if you really know how to use them, you can cut your cost by half. So based on the customer need. So just for an example. So the phase four, so host and application migration. So after we, um, the, we need to map physical resources like RAM, CPU, storage, network, RAID, all these type of hardware resources toward the virtual environments. So we do a host to virtual map, um, a virtual environment map. Like for example, we have a machine running with 8 gigs of RAM. We need to map the equivalent instance which is available on the cloud provider which has that 8 GB or, some, or something near around that. Similarly with storage, with network, with RAID, all these configurations have to be mapped. So that is one of the stages in the host and application migration. So this is actually done in the design itself. We do this mapping and in the host and application migration, we do the actuals there. So how, how it, uh, it boils down, what it, what it leads to. Uh, for example, Amazon uh, uh, works with instance types where you have predefined uh, RAM, storage, CPU for each instance type. But uh, if you take other cloud providers like Opsos and all that, they do not have uh, it based on instance types. They just have a standard instance and then you keep scaling up on that specific instance like 1 gig, 2 gig, 3 gig of RAM like that way. So they are different models. So we need to be sure of what kind of a model we are using and what kind of a mapping we are doing. So converting physical to virtual and virtual to physical, that is P2V and V2V. If it's feasible, identify and convert physical uh, and virtual hosts to virtual machine images. So what I mean by physical to virtual is a physical box running on a on dedicated system uh, that is called a physical machine, that is P. And the virtual uh, box is running on, say, a virtualized environment inside the organization. Uh, mind you, it's not the cloud, it's a virtual environment. So for example, VMware is a typical example. So most companies have VMware installed in their in their um, organization. They run images on that VMware virtualization images. So that's what the V means. So we if there is a already a virtual machine image available. Uh, you can take that virtual machine image and um, um, move it to the cloud. So many cloud providers have options like to import virtual machine images from popular vendors like VMware and, and KVM and Zen. So most of them support VMware in fact. So if you have already a VMware image, you can directly import it into the cloud provider and the cloud provider will make sure that it converts that specific VM uh, image uh, to um, um, an equivalent uh, um, cloud specific image like for Amazon, it's Amazon machine Im image. So, um, um, so yes, so you can migrate this physical to virtual or virtual to virtual, we need to do these migrations and then move this data. Now this data is going to be in terms of uh, terabytes. So there are options directly to move it over the wire to internet or you can ship the disks if the cloud provider supports that feature. You can ship the disk on directly to the cloud uh, provider and they take care of importing the data onto 
standard storage and then you can access those images and then launch those images uh, into the cloud. Um, you might be surprised all this thing just takes a couple of days up, um, you know to do all this work. An average of say 50 systems it will take at least uh, maybe around a week to host all these things into the cloud. So manual migration if uh, physical to virtual is not possible it's not feasible it's not working for some reason or the other for example you're running on an old zen uh, based hypervisor or kind of a kvm based hypervisor or uh, you know the box is too uh, old it's not able to uh, you know migrate then in that case you need to create the virtual environment on the cloud uh, uh, specific images on the cloud with respect to that specific box so we need to map that so we need to migrate the applications if it's not feasible to migrate then install the databases, the applications, web servers, homegrown applications like third-party applications. We need to do all these uh, whole nine years. We need to do all this into the cloud. So basically, you need to reconfigure the entire box into the cloud. There are two ways to do this. Basically, you can forklift the applications, migrate everything at once, and 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 you know just take pick it up and just deploy it on the cloud. Or you can do a hybrid approach where you can phase it out, move the applications in batches. So uh, pick up the ones that are easier first and move them onto the cloud then work with the harder ones and then slowly move them onto the cloud so different approaches available to do that application migration this consumes little time because you need to understand how the applications behave most of the cases in our experience the customers prefer to do this migration and help us in the migration because they understand the applications which are what they have built the homegrown applications are basically moved by the customer itself uh, and basically configured by the customer itself then we will launch instances and create images. Once we do that, we launch uh, the instances. Uh, the images are imported into the uh, cloud. We launch them and we run those in, uh, images, instances, and then we create images out of them. So that we have, if anything goes wrong, if the instance goes shuts down, or we need to launch a similar instance, we can just launch it from the image. So all these things, we and there are many other steps involved in this uh, host to an application migration. Uh, but we take care that uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not detailed all these lists down here, but this is a very critical stage. This is the actual migration what happens. Data migration. This is a very important phase. Um, uh, it's very critical also. We need to first identify how much of data is being migrated. What is the size of the data? So without understanding that size of the data being migrated, um, uh, we cannot migrate uh, just like that. So what, what is that data actually we are trying to do? What are we trying to do? 1 GB, 1 TB or 1 petabyte, we need to be very clear. So we need to identify different RDBMSs, commercial open source options available in the cloud today. So if it's a database based migration, so we need to understand that the cloud supports, uh, for example, supports Oracle, it supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, Sybase what will be the RDBMS? Does it support it? Okay, so that's one of the um, things we need to consider. We also we have another feature like some cloud providers provide these RDBMS as a service, like for example, um, Amazon um, RDS, Racial Database Service. It's a database service from Amazon itself. You can use that database service. So you might consider using the RDS service. In the design phase, you might uh, want to consider that option. But if your application is tightly coupled, for example, say to Oracle, then you might not want to do that. But usually 90% of the customers move their application to uh, RDS kind of a service. Why? What is the reason? The reason being RDS offers a platform as a service kind of a model. So when you move your data into RDS, you don't have to worry about scaling, scaling up, scaling down. RDS will take care of it. If you, have, if you bring your own database to the cloud, you need to take care of that scaling and, and tell the cloud to scale up and scale down and auto scale when it, when it has to do it. So that's the difference. Effort estimation. Identify the effort in terms of new development, scripts required to migrate all the data onto the cloud. So how much time it's going to take. You need to consider times uh, of the shipping times, the data import time, data export time. All these times need to be calculated before you actually move and say, okay, fine, it's going to take me 10 days, 15 days. Make sure you count for all these times required. Take the right trade-offs among different dimensions, cost, durability, query availability, ability, sorry, availability, latency, performance, durational uh, joins, accessibility, read versus write, frequency, 
cash ability. So all these trade-offs, you need to make some trade-offs here. There are many more trade-offs here, but you need to basically consider these trade-offs when you are trying to move to the cloud. You will definitely not get a one-to-one -one, uh, environment from what is there in your local infrastructure to the cloud. Hardware is always, any time, any day, much more reliable than the software. We all know that. But at the same time, um, the cloud now is becoming more and more reliable. But there will be some sort of trade-offs. So we need to make sure that we, we know those trade-offs well in advance. Identify and we choose different storage options. We have different storage options available in the cloud. Choose the best option available. So we have uh, like uh, Amazon has got elastic block storage and uh, we've got something called as uh, simple storage uh, and uh, which say simple storage is a little less um, uh, expensive, uh, less uh, which is slower than the uh, EBS kind of a storage and our process has got cloud files based storage. So consider options like mirroring, replication, all should be considered here when you're moving this data. So how, how is it mirrored, how is, how is the data replicated? Are we supposed to use EBS? Are we supposed to use S3? What kind of storage are we going to do? Are we supposed to mount volumes? How many volumes do we need to mount? So all, all these kind of things should be considered. It, these are all done and basically a part of the design, but when you are moving the data, make sure that everything is in place when we are moving this data out to the cloud. Prepare for the cloud environment. Prepare the cloud environment. Create the cloud environment. Options in the data mirroring etc. should be considered here, yes. Um, the cloud environment totally should be created um, before we move the data to the cloud. Data migration, consider data and migrate data from the data center to the cloud through internet or ship the disks. Um, yes, you need, after considering the trade-offs, you have to, as I said, you have to ship this data either through disks or move it over the wire depending on the data size. Um, but all not all cloud providers have this option of importing data, uh, shipping this, uh, disks to the uh, to them. Uh, Amazon does have it um, and some other cloud providers also do provide this feature. But if you don't have this feature, you can always use the wire to send it. So calculate, make sure you calculate the time required um, to move this huge amount of data volumes. If it's small amount of data, it's better to move it through the, web, the wire itself, through the web. Verify data integrity, check for data inter inconsistencies, ensure migration is successful. So all data when it's moved, to the, moved on to the cloud, definitely there will be some inconsist inconsistencies here and there. So uh, check for it, ensure that everything is okay, test it out properly and then you pass the um, phase of data migration. So after data migration, uh, the testing and the, and the rollout. So we finished data migration, we finished the application migration, now we have to test the whole cloud. Test how the cloud is treating you, check how it is behaving with you. Um, so check applications, data, network, so everything fits well, whether data is flowing in, flowing out, any network issues, bandwidth issues, applications are running properly, any security issues. So all this is done in the cloud testing. So cloud testing is a whole new service that, uh, which is offered by uh, ZSL. So we do all this cloud testing for you to make sure the application is running end to end. So apart from normal application testing, yeah, cloud specific application uh, features like elasticity, you're scaling up, scaling out, you're doing auto scaling, you're going back up in disaster recovery, you're scheduling something. Are all these working as as expected? So yes, we do trust the cloud provider. They should run, but every software is prone to errors, right? So we need to check this out. We need to run our own tests, run our own tools, and see whether everything is working as per sync, as per what we expect. So it may be running properly, but it may not be running as per our expectations, basically as per our requirement. So other features, are there any other vendor-specific cloud features being used? Then employ the right tools to test these features out. So. Um, Basically, after you move your application, the whole um, uh, in this step, in this phase, after you move your entire application, you need to make sure that everything is in sync, everything is integrated well, and they are running properly. And it's as per the customer requirement. So here is where you, where, where you will identify any bottlenecks, uh, some of the bottlenecks, some of the issues, some cost issues will come up here. Maybe the thing is running properly, but cost is going up. So this is where you will catch it in the testing phase. So leveraging the cloud. So after testing the whole thing now, it runs properly. Now you can actually extend and leverage other cloud features. Um, so identify services after migrating the applications to the cloud and running necessary tests. The analysis confirmed that everything is working as expected. Yes. Now leverage the benefits. 
So we invest time and resources to determine how to deliver additional benefits of the cloud. So might, you might have used out of 10 services, you might have used only two. So why not try out the other options to see where you can save money, save cost, increase performance. Like for example, auto scaling and edge caching your static website content. Like uh, this is very interesting. Like you move your web um, application to the cloud, you just take it and move it in the cloud. Yes, it works perfectly fine. But if you've got like thousands and thousands of images or videos or kind of PDFs, any static content, you might want to consider kind of something called as content delivery networks. So if you move this data, cache data onto CDNs, you would really optimize your application and costs. But it doesn't mean that it won't work if you don't use the CDN. This is how the benefit, you can weigh the benefits. So, but if you use the CDN, you can definitely leverage benefits from the cloud. The website will be much more faster. So, uh, some clouds provide you CDN, some clouds do not provide you. So, you have to make sure that the clouds uh, have these features and then leverage this specific service. Auto recovery uh, is one of the another features. So, if something goes wrong, how do you how do you recover from that? So, make business and disaster recovery. It's something similar to that. If it goes wrong, this instance goes down, something gets shut down for whatever be the reason. How do you uh, bring back your instance live online? So, you can leverage features of the cloud to do that. So it may not be directly possible, but definitely it is possible. And most importantly, elasticity. So how elastic you are, how, can, how much you can stretch, you can scale up, scale down, and, and how, how, when are you scaling up, when are you scaling down, how much RAM you are using, so what is the threshold, how much you actually, um, uh, how much how much the RAM or resources are actually being utilized versus how much are actually being, uh, you know, uh, allocated to those resources. Like for example, you use 8 GB, you have allocated 8 GB, but you're only using 4 GB. So this is what we need to make sure that we uh, identify this. So data recovery and business uh, uh, backup and disaster recovery basically, this is also very important. Um, uh, we need to leverage the cloud for, all, for, for this. Um, we can use multiple options in the cloud to do this. There are multiple ways of doing it um, uh, to disaster recovery, but each cloud definitely has, most of the clouds support this specific feature in different multiple ways. So you have to leverage this. And the last phase basically uh, is uh, optimization. Uh, this is a very important phase. The last two phases actually um, are, not, uh, are not mandatory, but definitely they are uh, uh, useful uh, in cutting your costs. So optimization basically terminate underutilized virtual instances. Uh, use the correct types of instance. If you're using like Amazon, use the correct types of instance maps. Um, go for spot and reserved instances if Amazon customers uh, check out these options available. See how you can reduce cost and optimize the uh, optimize the uh, cloud. Understand usage patterns. Find out the better ways of uh, designing it. Adapt it and uh, you know improvise on that. Uh, no design is perfect in the cloud. Each one has their own design. As I said, cloud is so flexible. Each one can come up with a various design. Each one is correct. But who is the best? Uh, based on cost, based on scalability, you need to measure these features. Keep in mind the cloud specific features and see that you're meeting those objectives. Application performance, improve the efficiency of the application architecture, implement caching where applicable, use caching servers of the cloud if the providers are, uh, provide as a service, like Amazon has come up with Elastic Cache, you can use that service, uh, maximum cache team. Or if you don't have that feature, you bring your own cache uh, me mechanism and, and integrate with the cloud. It's, it's very open. Then monitor your cloud, keep an eye on what's going on, Fix anything if it's required. All applications are prone to errors. All applications are prone to issues or bugs. So keep monitoring that. Fix them. You can deploy tools. There are multiple tools available to actually monitor the cloud and tell you, send you feedback. So deal with misbehaving applications. So keep optimizing. Keep optimizing. Keep improvising. And try to keep a, a, a watch of new features coming out of the cloud. Some clouds provide new features, they come up, they upgrade their service or they add a new feature. Keep, keep in touch with that and see how you can uh, improve that. So this is what optimization is all about. So here we come to the end of all the phases, all the eight phases of what we do uh, in, in application migration to the cloud. So um, I hope this was clear. Uh, so what do we do here? Cloud Professional Services by ZSL. We conduct strategy workshops, we have readiness assessments. In the workshops, uh, let us go step by step. 
In the workshop, we study review the existing business direction, IT strategy, recommend future alignment of both with cloud computing services. So, when you use assessments, we do uh, an assessment of the, of the cloud, we assess the uh, current IT applications, policies, resources, inventory, and check how ready the enterprise is actually uh, geared to move to the cloud. Consulting, we consult services to build, operate, manage private hybrid uh, clouds too. So we consult even for public clouds. Um, so we can actually deploy private clouds or we can consult with us for public clouds, move your data to public clouds and we help you with all that. And migration and integration which I just now spoke about, the application migration. So legacy modernization, integrating public cloud with in-house application and services. So we do that kind of a service too as well. And support services, we support managing and administering the customer's infrastructure and applications on the cloud. So managed cloud hosting, that's what it's called. So after your applications are moved to the cloud, we uh, as ZSL come in as partners and we manage that application and the entire cloud infrastructure with you, for you. So the smart price cloud services by, by ZSL. Uh, we have three main services here. The smart price cloud business continuity suite, cloud based backup, DR and business continuity. We have silver, gold and platinum levels to serve your organization. So uh, basically it's backup and disaster recovery. So it's called SmartPrice uh, Cloud Business Continuity Suite. SmartPrice Data Center as a service. So ZSL will basically build your next generation data center and we provide you with support management and administration. So we virtualize the entire data center and uh, bring it onto the cloud. That's what it means. So a SmartPrice Dev Test Cloud, we are, it's, a, it's a testing cloud where you can have developers leverage the cloud for developing and testing. Testing is one of the major benefits of the cloud. You can roll out hundreds of instances with different configurations, test your load, test whatever you want, bring them down next and it only costs you a few a few dollars. So um, we provide this service too. We show you how to do this and give it to you as a service. So cloud partnerships, we have a couple of cloud partnerships, um, mainly being IBM, Amazon, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Opsource, CompTIA, Azure, Virtual Bridges, Right Scale. So all, all these are basically our cloud partners. We have a couple of more cloud partners in the pipeline. We're working with them too. So we will basically tell you what, what each cloud provides you, what are the best features. We bring That's what we bring to the table. So um, we know what each cloud provides and what is best for you. And we support you with that. We give you the best option available to migrate your apps on the cloud. And, and after that, we support you with that too as well. So that's what, um, as a value add, we bring. We have some industry recognitions. Um, we have a CRM magazine named we have one of the top 30 cloud wars that get it right. CSL debuts in the top 20, 250 of the Innovation Week. And um, Softnet, that is a social network and online collaboration and management. We won the NGTC's 2010 Mid Atlantic Award. PowerCube DAS, our desktop as a service um, product, is recognized at IBM's Lotus Awards 2010. So we have a couple of other uh, awards which we have uh, got. We just listed a few of them here. So we are basically in for this. So with this, I wanted to go over a few, very few case studies very quickly. Um, we just picked up two of them. We have a couple of clients, but I just picked up two of them. One of them is an application migration for a leading radio service provider. So we pro basically did an entire migration following exactly the same eight step process what I just described to you. We did exactly that, follow that step by step process and migrated between of their applications onto the cloud. So, um, uh, second. Uh, security with virtual private cloud, all, all kinds of security features provided, load balancing was provided, content delivery was provided, business continuity. So basically all these um, features were, um, yeah. Case study one is not showing. Yeah. Not not showing. All right. So uh, anyway, there's some some technical yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Now it's good. All right. Sorry about that. So um, um, uh, this this lead your, uh, leading radio service provider. Now we implemented the Opsource Cloud and we used the exact eight step process to implement all these applications and migrate them to the cloud. We used cloud specific features like Elasticity, scaling up. That is what it is. Uh, content delivery networks, we use business continuity, we use a private, uh, virtual private cloud with VPNs and, um, and moved 15 applications uh, totally on the cloud. 
So uh, this is one of the case study I just wanted to um, uh, share with you and the main reason for them to move was, was scalability. Second one is a media service provider which is like a online uh, video kind of go to something like Netflix and uh, uh, Hulu and uh, uh, or TV or something a TV based site. So uh, uh, we basically um, um, used Amazon for this specific uh, customer. So here yeah, we use services like EC2, S3, Virtual Private Cloud, CloudWatch, SES, uh, CloudWatch basically the metrics, simp uh, simple email service, a simple queue service, the Route 53 service. So around 10 services of Amazon we have used to actually implement this specific uh, um, uh, cloud platform. To, to be honest with you, without using this cloud, this uh, customer definitely would have had, uh, had a very difficult time to scale this application. Right now this application scales uh, like crazy, like, like thousands of users, even millions of users can actually scale. As long as Amazon is able to scale, we will be able to scale. So there's no issues on that. And it also basically the beauty of this is whenever the, the load is low, it uh, uh, the peak is, uh, is, I mean the load is low, it, it brings down, automatically it shuts down instances, so you don't have, doesn't have to pay for what is not running. So it's a very beautiful application written. So we just have a small screenshot to show you that, um, how well this application has been designed. Right now it's live and they are actually uh, leveraging the Amazon cloud for this. So um, um, these are two case studies and yes, uh, that's the end of this uh, webinar. Um, now I think I've, we've got around eight minutes left, so if any Questions, I'm ready to take it now. So over to Sugalia. Thank you, Navin. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, can you elaborate more on uh, host migration? Host uh, migration, yeah, good question. So let me go back to the slide where we saw this host migration. Um, for your benefit, I'll... Uh, okay. Host application migration, host means your physical box. So basically it's your computer, or your hardware or your server. That's called what we define as a host. And the application is the, the actual software which sits inside that box. Now I think I think some of you are confused between P2V, V2V and host. What is all these three things do? Okay, a physical box is a host. Okay, that's the host. And what applications sit inside that box, inside that operating system is the application. A physical, that's a physical black box, that's defining the P. Now in some organizations we all have, we have VMware installed as a virtualization layer where these hosts sit inside a virtualization layer. So they become basically virtual machines. So that is the V. So I hope this is clear. So the physical box is the host and the virtual machine which runs inside in some organizations that is, runs inside a virtualization layer, that is the virtual machine. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, we have the. Thank you. Uh, I think I have the. Another question is: uh, Is there any specific uh, challenges that you faced while migrating the application? Uh, good question. Actually, yeah, um, I wanted to write a list of challenges, but um, uh, with lack of time, we didn't. I did not really mention this. There are a couple of challenges we faced when moving these um, uh, applications to the cloud. Uh, to the cloud, basically. <coughs> Excuse me. One is choosing the right cloud provider, which cloud is the best, um, what type of instances are available, what kind of resources are available on the specific cloud. If it's a simple application to move a web service or a web, a website on the cloud, it's very straightforward. But if we have like applications like, for example, uh, say, yeah, say Oracle eBusiness Suite, for uh, take, uh, those kind of applications where you want to move it to the cloud. We need to understand the length and the breadth, the whole nine yards of what the cloud has to, what the cloud specific cloud vendor has to offer you. So that is a it was a very big challenge. We need to design it very perfectly well. And some of the applications, homegrown applications, we faced a lot of uh, issues because these homegrown applications connect to different, like for example, connecting over UNC parts in the different network, integrating with different applications, storing data in, in local file parts. So these type of issues we faced with uh, when we moved it. So when you move it to the cloud, it tries to search for some local network path and gives you an issue there. Um, um, then the third challenge what we face is the data, data inconsistencies. When moving data, way, data from, from here to the cloud, we need to make sure that uh, uh, the data is accurate, uh, the correct data is taken. So this is not basically a challenge, basically it's a lack of uh, you know management, how we do it. So we send the wrong data there, we have to repeat the entire process again, once again, to send the correct data. 
So sometimes data gets missed uh, when we send these huge uh, terabytes of information over the wire. So we need to make sure that um, that that uh, data is also properly done. So these are some of the challenges what we faced um, uh, uh, when moving to the cloud. Okay. So any questions? You can post your questions. The chat will be One more question. So, do you follow this eight-phase approach for all the cloud clients? Um, yes, uh, we do. Uh, in all the eight phases uh, of this specific, um, uh, I'll list the phases down. Um, most most of the phases are mandatory. We need to follow it. As I said, uh, the proof of concept sometimes may be skipped if we are very sure about what we are doing and what services we are going to use. Uh, that may be skipped, um, um, but. All the other uh, seven phases will be uh, have to be used. In fact, in most of our cases, we have done a proof of concept for the customer, so the customer also knows what what he is going to get from the cloud and what he will not get from the cloud. So the answer to the question is uh, yes, we do follow this eight phase uh, approach for all our clients. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Right then. Any questions? So. I think we are sharp, right? Okay. So for any questions, for additional questions, please uh, feel free to email us at 8 or call us at 732-549-9773. So I would like to thank everyone again for joining us on today's webinar. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sugaria.